Hi, it's Lee and welcome to the Tesla Economist. So back to the earnings call. Tesla was asked about potential energy issues in Berlin and Germany that might create issues with production and sales. Tesla don't see this as a large risk. Even if the production went down for a time, it would just be near term anyway and not have any major implication for the company. Elon then interjects and says that they have no indication whatsoever that they will have to cut out production in Germany. But Tesla have faced similar issues in the past in Shanghai, along with lockdowns and supply chain issues, and all the rest of the chaos that we've seen with issues facing the world as of late, that we're still not yet recovered from. And now Tesla keep extra inventory in Shanghai, rather than a just-in-time delivery, as a buffer in case there are supply chain issues again. It may cost $100 million or something, keeping extra inventory for components. But if Tesla lose production for a week or so, it costs a lot more. Tesla don't want to risk losing production, not when they are so profitable. So it's worth investing in buffers and safeguards to prevent any risk of production loss. And even despite Tesla not expecting any similar scenarios due to energy shortages in Germany, they're still not going to risk it and have put backups in place for just in case. And they haven't stopped there either but done the same for their suppliers too. I keep saying, Tesla are not messing around. Then we're asked many questions about Cybertruck progress. They say they are still on track to enter production at the middle of next year. In other words, nothing has changed and Tesla are still on track with everything as far as Cybertruck is concerned. No setbacks have occurred, supposedly. I mean, Tesla and Elon have a reputation of delivering late. But bear in mind, we did just go through a massive global pandemic that was tough for all businesses. Yet remember, Tesla still managed just about 50% growth through that time. They started their beta builds for the Cybertruck of battery and body, which is going well, and they plan on ramping up throughout the year into 2023. Then Elon says that the Cybertruck is going to be sick, a next level Hall of Famer. Elon even says sorry that it took longer than expected, but there were a few things that got in the way, namely what I just previously mentioned. And Elon wants to bring up the semi-truck too, whilst we're on the subject of new trucks, which will be handed over to Pepsi on December the 1st. I don't believe there has been an announcement of how many. I wouldn't have thought that many. One thing to bear in mind is that they will require all new infrastructure with the mega chargers that are about one and a half megawatts. So they can charge the semi-trucks enormous battery at a fast enough speed, aiming to be charging the trucks when they're being unloaded. Therefore, I would guess that the initial infrastructure will likely be some popular routes that Pepsi currently use, where the roads are also level ground. If there were hundreds of trucks, then they would need a lot of chargers. So another reason I wouldn't have thought there'd be too many initially. Also, we don't know anything about the production line of the semi-truck other than it is currently being built in Nevada. I'm surprised that they're not building a larger factory already, perhaps in Texas for them, with a larger production line. And they'll be ramping the production from there. And this is a max load heavy class A truck with no sacrifice to cargo capacity, yet still capable of 500 miles of range with the cargo. A long range truck, even with heavy cargo. So many people have doubted this would be possible. Everyone thought it would only be possible with hydrogen not electric. Seeing this truck working will remove a lot of doubt as to Tesla's capabilities. Then Elon says that they're tentatively aiming for 50,000 units in 2024 for the Tesla Semi. Now, Elon does say in 2024, not by 2024, but most people have inferred this to mean by 2024. So make up your own mind. And this was just for North America, but they want to eventually expand beyond America too. Now, 50,000 semi-trucks at almost a megawatt hour of battery per semi-truck is going to be close to 50 gigawatt hours of sales required. Now, bear in mind, they are also expanding Giga Nevada at the moment. The capacity there may be about 40 gigawatt hours a year. So what if the 2170 sales are for that truck? I would have thought that Tesla would want to eventually expand production of the semi-truck a lot to potentially hundreds of thousands a year. So I think inevitably, they will end up using 4680 sales. But the advantage of getting structural battery pack saving doesn't really make as big a deal when you weigh about £80,000 or so, as it's a much relatively smaller weight saving when compared to, say, a compact. 
This could also mean that Tesla may want a lot of the semi trucks for themselves. It would appear right now we're seeing new bottlenecks in logistics and there not being enough ways to deliver the vehicles. Tesla are renowned for vertical integration. If they make their own transportation trucks, then this is just one more level of vertical integration for them. The load would be fine. They could carry almost 20 Model 3s and Ys on each truck of equivalent weight, although I'm not sure there'd be big enough trailers for that. Elon then says each semi-truck sacrifices several Model Ys, which I assume he is referring to the opportunity cost of cells. Given that the battery is probably about 10 times the size of a Model Y, then this is not that surprising. The thing is, 10 Model Ys is possibly around $200,000 gross profit, so this is quite a large opportunity cost. I mean, unless they're using 2170 cells only, and Tesla want to move Model 3 over to LFP, and move Model Y and Robotaxis over to 4680s, I'm not really sure. Although the next question does ask, what factors determine which vehicle gets 4680 or 2170 cells, along with the 4680 progress ramp? And we hear again that the total output is up three times quarter over quarter. And production is tracking to exceed 1,000 car sets a week this quarter, which might mean about 336 megawatt hours a month, which comes to about four gigawatt hours a year. This is not really what I would call high volume production yet. They say the focus is now shifting from 100% ramp to cost and further expanding production capacity in North America, presumably because the dollar is so strong and there's so many incentives for building batteries in North America and EVs. I mean, they do seem positive about the 4680 cell progress, but there's nothing really that concrete here about them cracking the process yet. It's not quite the breakthrough I'm hoping to see that we were promised. So much of the company's future relies on this cell being sorted. I guess we have to keep on waiting. Four gigawatt hours still isn't great, even if we were at 10 times that, then it's not enough sales for Texas when ramped up. But if it is exponential growth and they can keep getting three times the output every quarter, then after two quarters, we're at nearly 10 times as much, which would mean by about Q2 next year, there would be enough sales for Model Y and Cybertruck in volume production. Although personally, I think we're still waiting for some sort of engineering breakthrough, likely something to do with the dry battery electrode process for the cathode, which no one asked about. Unfortunately, no one asked any of the timelines either, like when do you expect to be at 100 gigawatt hour run rate for the 4680 cells? That would have been good to know too. However, I think we can assume that most of these cells are all coming from the Cato Road facility. Well, that fab was meant to have a capacity of 10 gigawatt hours with one line. Texas has four lines, with each line supposedly having a capacity of 25 gigawatt hours. They're also using next generation manufacturing equipment compared to Cato Road. This would imply that Cato Road is perhaps at around 30% or so capacity. Well, if they can get Texas to about that, perhaps in Q2, then we're going to be at a run rate of probably closer to 40 gigawatt hours a year. That's close to enough for volume production for the Cybertruck and Model Y. Elon then says, in a nutshell, 4680 ramp is growing exponentially and it's going well, it's looking good. It's going to have a very major impact in the future. Then Elon repeats that the goal is to strive towards 1000 gigawatt hours a year of annual production in the United States alone, just from Tesla, not including suppliers. We don't know when though. Some people think he's talking about 2030. There isn't really enough lithium available in the world today for Tesla to achieve that now. However, apparently Tesla's lithium refinery will be complete in 2024. So who knows when Tesla might achieve this milestone. Then they go on to say that there needs to be about 300 to 400 terawatt hours of batteries in the world, of which we've heard in the past. That is a big number. And even at a rate of 1000 gigawatt hours a year, it will take three to 400 years to achieve that. So let's hope Tesla can ramp up significantly higher than that, along with all their suppliers and other battery manufacturers. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.